May Jesus Christ be praised now and forever. Amen. My dear brothers in the priesthood, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the most blessed Virgin Mary was given a unique role as associate of the Redeemer in the history of our salvation. From all eternity, God chose for the mother of his son, a daughter of Israel, a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. The father of mercies willed that the incarnation should be preceded by assent on the part of the predestined mother, says Vatican II. Lumen Gentium 56. The Blessed Virgin Mary was foreshadowed by many distinct, distinguished women in the Old Testament. Not all of them necessarily saints, beginning with Eve, and Mary is the new Eve, then Sarah, Hannah, Deborah, Ruth, Judith, Esther. After a long period of waiting, the times were fulfilled. The exalted daughter of Zion and the new plan of salvation unfold. The Immaculate Conception is that fullness of grace which God gave the Blessed Virgin Mary at the moment of her conception in the womb of her mother, Saint Anne. She is splendor of an end. It is the splendor of an entirely unique holiness, redeemed in a more excellent fashion by reason of the merit of her son. All holy, free from every sin, not only original, but personal. Our tainted nature's solitary boast, wrote the poet once worth. But our greatest title is Mother of God. Be it done to me according to your word. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, already recognized. What a grace to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me. The Council of Ephesus in the year 431 sealed as dogma, recognizing this fact. Mary is not only mother of God, the incarnate son who took on human nature. She is also always virgin because she conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit without human seed, says Council of Lateran. That which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, the angel already told and reassured Joseph, Behold, a virgin will conceive and bear a son. Isaiah, so understood and interpreted by many fathers of the church. Christ's birth did not diminish his mother's virginal integrity, but sanctified it. So she is ever virgin, where the uh, evangelists sometimes talk of the brothers and sisters of Christ. It's only those who decide to be scandalized that will be scandalized. Uh, I, somebody comes in Rome and they told me my brother is uh, waiting for me. He's just a person from Nigeria. I never saw him before because uh, <laughs> we don't have uh, in my language a word for cousin and nephew and niece. We call our brothers. If I said you are not my brother, it means I reject you, I don't love you. So it's normal. And Mary's virginal motherhood is God's plan. So rejoice, you full of grace. The angel greeted her. Mary is the masterwork of the mission of the Son and the Spirit in the fullness of time. The dwelling place where the Son and the Spirit could dwell among men, 
she is seat of wisdom. The Holy Spirit prepared Mary by his grace, fulfilled in her the plan of the Father, the Father's loving goodness. So with and through the Holy Spirit, the Virgin conceives and gives birth to the Son of God. In Mary, the Holy Spirit manifests the Son of the Father, now becomes Son of the Virgin also. She is the burning bush. The bush is burning, but is not destroyed. It is to the poor and to the first representatives of the Gentiles that Mary makes the word of God known. Through Mary, the Holy Spirit begins to bring people into communion with Christ, beginning with the shepherds, the Magi, Simeon, Anna, and the lucky bridegroom and bride in the wedding at Cana. Then the first apostles. There is no wonder that Mary is called the new Eve. Mary is mother of the church. Wholly united with her son, the Blessed Virgin Mary advanced in her pilgrimage of faith, an expression used by Vatican II, pilgrimage of faith. All the details in the life of Christ we are not necessarily revealed to the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that twice at least, the evangelist tells us, the Mary did not understand, but kept these words, reflecting them on them in her heart. After the ascension with the apostles, we also see Mary that by her prayers implores the coming of the Holy Spirit, whom she had already received at the Annunciation. Assumed into heaven, she continues to intercede for us in a way wholly singular. She cooperated by her obedience, faith, hope, and burning charity in the Savior's work of restoring supernatural life to souls. For this reason, she is um, our mother in the order of grace. Obviously, Mary's function as mother and intercessor, advocate, in no way obscures or diminishes the unique mediation of Christ. It underlines it. Clearly, Mary is no threat to Christ, and her greatness is Christ's greatness. She herself declared, the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Therefore, our devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary has firm foundations. It is not we who made Mary great. It is the Almighty who did great things for her. When we recognize her as our mother, we are only doing the correct thing. A child that refuses to recognize the mother isn't really a good child. Also, is not intelligent. The church's devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary is just part of Christian worship. Some Christians who don't honor our Blessed Mother, they deserve someone to inform them that there's something wrong with their Christianity. And some of them pride themselves that they read Holy Scripture. They never read um, Matthew 1, 2 and Luke 1, 2 or even John 19. So Mary is icon also of the church. In the Blessed Virgin Mary, the church sees herself, virgin and mother, and sees what she herself is to become. So the Blessed Virgin Mary, we beg her to pray for us. Her prayer is powerful. She already said fiat, and the word became flesh in her womb. She said a few words, and Christ turned six pots of water into wine. And she told the servants, do what he tells you. Those are her last 
recorded words in the gospel. The Blessed Virgin Mary, therefore, has a place in Christian worship. It isn't a place invented by the theologians or the Vatican. It is just a recognition of a fact. Saturdays, you will notice, during the odd time, ordinary time throughout the year, when there is no obligatory memorial, Saturday we honor the Blessed Virgin Mary. St. Bernard says, explaining why it is fitting is not a dogma, but it is fitting. And the reason he gives is that after the death of her son, Mary remained constant in faith. On Holy Saturday, she didn't see her son. She saw him on Good Friday, even though in terrible suffering. And she saw him on Easter Sunday. We are not told how Christ appeared to his mother. But do you really believe that Christ appeared to Mary Magdalene and then Peter and John and the apostles and then forgot his mother? But probably we are not fit to be told that detail. God has told us enough for our salvation, but not enough for our curiosity. It is probable that the Blessed Virgin Mary just kept that detail to herself because we would have loved to know how Christ appeared to his mother on Easter day. So Saturday then, being the day between Good Friday and Easter Sunday, when she just believed, one person has called the Blessed Virgin Mary the woman of faith on Holy Saturday. It explains why it is fitting that we honor her particularly on Saturdays. We thank the Lord who knows that a childless, a motherless child isn't really all right. So Christ gave us his mother. And even if he didn't declare it on Calvary, Mary is already our mother because she is mother of Christ and we are Christians to whom be honor and glory forever and ever.